First of all, I love every, each and every one of you, and I hope that one day I can work at Funimation Studios with all of you. Also, my question is, have you guys ever ordered a pizza in your characters' voices? <laughs> sound like me, so yes. <laughs> I haven't, but on a related note, uh, I just took a trip with my, my wife and kids to uh, National Park, and we uh, did, you know, we saw trees and rocks and stuff. We also went on a cave tour, and we wound our way down in, and on down, and down, and we got to this really dark uh, section of the cave, and we all sat down on these little planks on the floor, and the guy leading the tour said, okay, so we're now far enough down, and all the caves have twisted and turned so much that no natural light makes it down here. So if I were to turn out these lights, we would have perfect pitch darkness and you would not be able to see the hand in front of your face. Would everybody like me to turn out the lights? And everyone went, yeah, and just, the lights went out and went, And he tried this new pizza place, and they said, hey, I'd like to get a pepperoni, large pepperoni. <laughs> okay, what's your name? Uh, Jay Leno. I was like, yeah, fella. And the guy hung up on him. <laughs> like, oh, no, it's really Jay Leno. Yeah, fella, shut up. And he couldn't order the pizza because the guy really didn't believe it was Jay Leno. So it was, I've, never, I've never ordered a pizza either as Jay or anyone else, but it's a good idea. I've never ordered pizza as a character, but I have answered the phone for, like, solicitors, like calling a house as a... I'll usually answer the phone if I don't know the number, like, um, hello? <laughs> and they ask the... Hi, little girl, is your, uh, is your mom or dad home? <laughs> um, I don't know where, I don't know where they are. Well, are, are, you, are you home by yourself? Yeah, they left and then I been here. I don't know where they're coming from. Solar panels? <laughs> I don't know if you know this or not, but the solicitors are not allowed in their job to hang up on you. You have to hang up on them, so they have to stay on the phone. So I love when they call, I go, I'm so glad you called me because I was this close to doing it, man. <laughs> <laughs> I really need somebody to talk to. I'm so glad you called me. Uh, well, uh, gee, are you interested in my solar panel? <laughs> I'm so glad, man. I'm just being friend, you know? Yeah, like, uh, <laughs> Everybody, uh, after this con, do yourself a favor and Google Roger Craig Smith and prank phone. I think that I will find it. He, some guy from India, was scam calling him trying to get, I don't know, his credit card information yeah, or something. Yeah. And Roger just slipped into really strange voices and talked to this guy for like 10 minutes each phone call. It's insane. Google it. I think he was like two or three different voices. Like he was. Hello? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He'd move the phone away and there'd be another voice from another. What are you doing in there? Oh god, my dad's home. Huh? <laughs> it's the spirit clog thing, yeah. The dog starts barking. Get off my leg. Don't do that. No. <laughs> Thank you so much. It must have rain. 
That's snow, I know that. But uh, anyways, Mary Elizabeth was directing. It's the first time I had worked with her, and uh, I was a little scared of her, actually. And so, she is. When you first meet her, you know? Um, even Actually, even now, I'm still scared of her. But, uh, <laughs> but, uh, but anyway, so, so I usually try to get to work early or whatever, but I was running late, and so I skipped breakfast. I was like, I better be there, you know, she's gonna kill me. And so, but she's not like that, but I just thought that might. But anyway, so I get there, I make it in time, but I didn't eat anything, and, uh, and I'm starting to work, and I notice my stomach is starting to uh, growl a bit, or like it wants to growl, and so I grab some water and drink it, you know, and shut it up, because it's super embarrassing. I, this is like my second show I've ever worked on, I don't want them to hear my stomach growl. It's like being at school, and your stomach's growling, you know, and you're like, <coughs> and you start shuffling some bangles, <laughs> you know, trying to cover up the sound. But you can't do anything in the booth, you know, because it hears everything, so I'm just like, I hear like, it's like in my mind, it's like a growling monster. It's like, oh, I'm going to growl. Like, poor water on his head. It's like, oh, you know? And so it, it's working for a while, you know? It's like, I feel it, and I'm like, boom. And I shut him up. And then out of nowhere, my stomach, like, when they're uh, supposed to record, my stomach makes a growling noise. And it's not like a regular, regular growl noise. It's not like, Rrr, when I can be like, oh, embarrassing my stomach growl. I went like this. <laughs> it made like, like I tried to sneak out a fart, but my butt cheeks were like, no. <laughs> I could feel them just looking at me, just like staring through the glass. I was like, oh my gosh, why did, of all the stomach noises, why that? Like, what the hell's going on in there? And so I look over, they're like, <laughs> I was like, that was not a fart. I know it sounded like a fart, but it wasn't. She's like, <laughs> so I don't come in here. It just smell, it smells fine in here. So I can't just, uh, <laughs> You know the studio engineers. You know the studio engineers save that in the library, and uh, we all listen to it uh, for a laugh when we go. It's, it's currently my ringtone. <laughs> Phone rings. <laughs> On a related note, at least ten times in my twelve years doing this, I've gone into the booth, and the engineer comes in and goes, "Okay, let's get a good height." And I'm like, "Okay, the mic's good. They still you off." And I go like, "Some gig or something," and they'll leave. And we'll seal, and I'll do a line, and go, "Okay," mm, and I'll. A little gas go and fill up the booth, and I'll be like, okay, I'm by myself, and then they'll go, oh, wait, we're sending in Dutch, he's gonna fix the mic. I'm already poisoned the box. No, 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 session for a character and they uh, I said I don't remember this character can it play a reference yeah we got a reference right here and you're booked for like two three hours to do this character and they play the reference it ain't you it's somebody else <laughs> yeah I'm like oh that's not me and they're like what oh that's that's not me and then okay what do we do now so uh, I think in the most recent incident I just said don't well don't uh, don't pay me because that's silly just deal because that's that's weird to just go all the way they're like oh thank you thank you has that ever happened to you? The uh, reference is not you. I think that's happened, yes. But I also did like a whole session one time. I did the um, some voice work for Star Tours at Disneyland, which is crazy. But um, it was like a four-hour session with like a, a bunch of other people. Did all these like alien whatever. At the end of the session, I go to sign my contract, and it was Laura, some other me, like not not me, some other name. And I was like, oh my god, they called me in, thinking I was somebody else, and they. So I had to tell them, like, you called in the wrong person. They were like, oh, well, you did a great job, so we'll just make up a new contract. So thank God they messed up when they were booking it. Sorry, the person. <laughs> I thought it was weird, because I was like, how did I get called in for Star Tours? Right? It was meant to be. <laughs> oh, your oh, second oh, question. Oh, you think you're special? <laughs> I've said this before, there was a signing and a guy brought up a leather briefcase and, and opened it and it was like uh, lined in velvet and inside was this beautiful brand new shiny uh, trumpet, or a saxophone, it was a saxophone, just gorgeous. I was like, wow. And he goes, yeah, would you mind signing my saxophone? 
He's like, I mean, yeah, I guess, are you sure? He's like, yeah, yeah, please. I'm like, okay. And right before I start to sign, I'm like, is this yours? And he goes, no, no, it's my school's. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> yesterday during our signing and, and asked if I would sign his arm and said he was going to go tattoo it. And I believe him because Tara Strong's was right above it and it was tattooed. So he said he was going to show me today. He was like on his way to the tattoo point. I occasionally get asked to sign people's faces. Yeah. I say no. Really? Yeah, I'm not going to. Oh, you should make it huge. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to make the good decision for them to not <laughs> We just got the word we only have 10 more minutes, so let's, in the interest of. Uh, Thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> Let me just move my autograph idea for today's session. Critical Roll shirt! Woo! Right. All right, so my question is looking back on your careers, are there any roles that you passed on that you're like, man, I really wish I had done that now? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> well, I take everything, I don't pass on anything, so. I heard we 
done. I think it's done. Yeah, there's a lot of rumors that when they finish the manga, that they might start out. Thank you. Thank you. See you, dude. Dude, Jeff, Jeff Bridges, everybody. Yes. You're awesome. You're awesome. But if you guys really want to see that stuff, you should go book them. <laughs> like seriously, like email them. Yeah, if you guys, if there's enough people that want it, they're gonna do something about that. All right, thank you. Well, it's gonna be Japan's decision. I mean, they're the ones. <laughs> yeah, so email them. English. Google Translate. Um, I was wondering, uh, who's your guys' favorite bad guy? Check your schedules and see what we're doing next. Uh,